In this video, we're gonna be talking about the four toolpaths that you need to know as a beginner CNC woodworker. It is the pocket toolpath, the V-carve toolpath, and the contour toolpath, and a V-carve with the flat bottom. So if you're brand new and really don't know a whole lot about toolpaths, I believe that these four will get you started. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with the A Timber Pine. And when I first started using my CNC, I really didn't know what to press, what options to use, what tool paths even were. So it took me some time, some digging around, and I eventually got it. So the purpose of this video is just to give you some knowledge to get you more comfortable and give you more confidence when it comes down to carving your first project. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Edgar from the future. As I'm editing this video, I just realized that I didn't even define what a toolpath is. A toolpath is the set of instructions that tells the CNC how to carve. So when you enter some of the details in your toolpath section of your program, whether it be Carve by Create or another, it's going to basically start creating those details, that recipe on how the CNC should run when it's time to actually run the project. So in this video, we're just covering the four fundamental toolpaths that I believe every beginner should know. Let's go ahead and go back into the video. So like I said, we're gonna be covering the four fundamental toolpaths that I think you should know to get you started. I'm not gonna be doing any specific projects. We're just gonna go ahead and jump into Carbide Create and go over the different toolpaths. Whether or not you're using Carbide Create is irrelevant. You can use whatever program you're using. Just take the knowledge and apply it to the program of your choice. And one last thing guys, before we jump into it, if you are getting value out of the content of this channel, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave me a comment. It all helps out with the algorithm. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. We're gonna be using this simple shape, the simple rectangle as our example for discussing the toolpaths. With our vector selected, we're going to click on toolpaths. We're going to then start with the contour toolpath. I'm going to use current selection. And for this example, we're going to be using the 1 8 inch end mill. We're not going to go through any settings. We just want to go ahead and talk about and see how you can use the toolpaths. With that in mind, when you use a contour toolpath, there are two applications for it. The first application is carving on your vector line. You have the opportunity to carve the line. And not only that, you have the opportunity to carve on the outside of the line or on the inside of the vector line. So it's kind of like a coloring page. Let me actually bring up a coloring page real quick. Let's assume that this Mario is a vector in Carbide Create. We are going to have the option to select whether or not we want to carve on the black lines or whether we want to carve on the outside of the lines or if we wanna carve on the inside of the lines. So option number one, when carving with a contour toolpath, you have the option to just carve on the lines, okay? The second option is going to be carving out a shape or a design, a logo, a Mario, for example. We could carve this completely out from a larger piece of material, and we would still have to select whether or not we wanna carve on the line, within the line, or outside of the line. Depending on the desired output will determine what option you select. Let's go ahead and go back to Carve by Create. So with that in mind, let's talk about the first example first. Let's just carve on the material itself. We have to set a max depth. When we are carving into the material and we're not cutting through it, we want to set a max depth. Again, depending on the output that you want will determine the max depth that you select. If you're just wanting to carve a sign, want to carve a flag, for example, the max depth that I recommend would be anywhere between 0.03 and 0.05. My current favorite max depth is 0.04. I don't believe that you need to go much deeper. You're just trying to carve the stain away or the paint away to get the natural wood underneath, allowing you to either leave it as is or paint the letters. So go ahead and set a max depth. The offset direction will allow you to determine whether or not you want to carve on the line itself, on the inside of the line, or on the outside of the line. So currently inside left is selected, and you can see here that my vector is this red line. My tool will be running here on the blue line. So it's going to carve on the inside of the vector. In this drop down menu, you have the option for outside right, and it changes it to outside the vector line. And you have the option for no offset, which allows you to carve on the line. For the purposes of this simulation, I'm going to increase this to 0.1 just so that we are able to see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and click on the simulation now. And so in this simulation, you're able to see that the end mill is carving right on the vector line giving us that nice rectangle. But what if I wanted to carve this rectangle out? What if I wanted this shape completely out? We're gonna go back into our toolpath and we're going to select stock bottom for our max step. We wanna carve completely through it. We're going to determine what offset we want. Typically when I carve things out of larger pieces of material, I want outside right selected. I want the entire dimension of this rectangle here. When it's carved on the outside right, that will be my output. If I were to carve on the inside, 
I'm cutting this short. I'm not going to get the entire dimensions. And same with no offset. I'm not going to get the entire piece. So outside right is typically what I choose. And one last thing, even before coming into the tool pass, we have to set up tabs. When you're carving something out from larger pieces of material, if you don't have tabs, what tends to happen is that the end mill, as the router gets down closer to the bottom of your material, the end mill has a tendency of hitting your material because it starts moving. It starts shifting within the larger piece of material and the end mill starts to knock it out of place. And eventually it will pop it out from your larger piece of material and actually ruin it. So you want to set up tabs. To set up tabs, you have to be in the design tab. You have to have your vector selected and you want to click on this edit tabs option. You're then going to click on your vector line and place these tabs. Go ahead and click OK once you're done. Once you have those set up, now you can go to your tool paths and let's just edit this one here real quick. And now you have the option to edit the width or the height if you need to. I typically don't mess around with these. I just let the default number stay. But again, you have the option to edit that if you'd like. Let me update this back to stock bottom. Let's go ahead and click outside right. And let's go ahead and click OK. And let's take a look at the simulation now. All right, so in this simulation, you can see that the white background is showing through, meaning that I'm cutting through or carving through the entire piece of the material. And this rectangle is going to be secured to the larger piece of material by these tabs. So when you're using the contour toolpath, those are the two options that are available to you. Next, let's talk about the pocket toolpath. The pocket toolpath is a very versatile toolpath, and you're able to do a lot of things with this as well. But let's talk about two fundamental functions or options that you have available with the pocket toolpath. The very first one is going to be creating pockets or recesses within your larger piece of material. So let's say I was making a catch-all tray and I wanted to create an area to be able to place my phone. Let's pretend that my phone is going to fit within this area. Well, I need to create a pocket to remove all that material out. I'm taking material away or out from my larger piece of material. And so with a vector selected, we come over to the toolpath option. We're going to click pocket, use current selection. And to create the pocket, you have several different tools that you're available that you can use. You can use end mills, you can use bowl bits. It all depends again on the output that you want. If you're a beginner, probably the quarter inch or the one eighth inch end mill is what you're going to use to create those pockets. So after your tool is selected, you have to create a max depth. And depending on the output that you need, that will determine the max depth that you're going to select. So let's just create a pocket at 0.1 inches and let's click OK. Here the blue lines are telling you that this area is going to be carved using your end mill. Let's take a look at the simulation. In this simulation, you can see that the pocket has been created. There is a recess within this piece of material. There's that little lip there. So that was a successful run of this pocket toolpath. But not only can you create recesses like this, you can actually carve designs, logos using the pocket toolpath. Let me bring in a design real quick. I just brought this image from the Carbide Create library. Let's go ahead and use this vector or this design as our example. So clicking on toolpaths, we'll select pocket. We'll use current selection. We'll leave it at the 1 8 inch end mill. My max depth is going to be 0 0.04 because I don't want to carve too deep. Let's go ahead and click OK. And let's take a look at the simulation. So not only can we create those recesses for just simple shapes, we can actually create designs into our material using a pocket toolpath. Depending on the design and the details that are in the design, you may not be able to just use a 1 8 inch end mill or an end mill in general. But just keep in mind that there may be some limitations. But depending on the design, you may just be able to use a pocket toolpath. Moving on to the next toolpath, that's going to be the V-carve toolpath. One thing that you need to keep in mind when using the V-carve toolpath is that you do need two vectors or vectors that are close to each other to make this happen, to make this work. The reason being is that if you can imagine a V-bit, it kind of looks like a V or an arrowhead. Those two edges, the cutting edges or the blades are going to be within two vectors. So it's perfect for text. It's perfect for shapes that have two vectors. So if you're thinking about what I just said, you already know that this is not going to be able to be V-carved, at least not successfully. I already have a video published on how to use the V-carved toolpath, so I won't go into much of that detail. You can go ahead and watch that video for a more in-depth explanation of how the V-carve works. But for this example, we are not able to V-carve this rectangle. But even so, let's take a look at a simulation when we try to run a V-carved toolpath on this vector. So we'll click on toolpaths, click V-carve use current selection. We'll just keep it as a 60 degree V-bit. And the max step when you run a V-carve toolpath should be stock bottom. 
Don't worry, it does not carve through your material. Carbot Create will determine how deep it needs to cut to get you the proper output. So the blue line in here is the path that the V bit is going to take and it's trying to carve this shape out. First of all, you have one vector and it's too wide here. So it's going to be way too big for the 60 degree V bit or any V bit. Let's take a look at the simulation. So this is what our output would be. It's going to plunge really deep into this material. So that's not gonna work. Let's go back to our design and let's make this work. What we need to do is we need to create an offset and let's just create an offset at 0.5 on the inside. Now we have these two vectors. We can select those. We're going to run a toolpath. Let's get rid of this one. Select V carve, use current selection. We'll keep it at 60 degree V bit. We're going to let the program determine how deep it needs to carve. Click OK. And now you can see that the blue line is within these two vectors and it looks like a better carve. Let's actually take a look at the simulation. And there you have it guys. This would actually be a successful carve. So this toolpath is really good for designs, logos that have a lot of detail. Great for text. Let's go ahead and use this as an example. Let's go ahead and select it. We'll click on toolpaths. We'll delete this one. Select V carve, use current selection, use stock bottom, click OK. And then we'll show the simulation. And there you have it, a very nice looking sign right there. And just one more example, let's use this free design that came with Carbide Create. Let's go ahead and select it. Let's click on toolpath. We can get rid of this one. V carve, use current selection, use stock bottom, click OK. Let's take a look at the simulation. And there's a pretty cool looking sign. The V carve is actually a very versatile toolpath. The more you use it, the more practice you get, the more confident you'll be with it. Let's go ahead and talk about the last toolpath, the advanced V carve next. Okay, and the final toolpath that we're going to cover is the Advanced V-Carve Toolpath. And the Advanced V-Carve Toolpath is a V-Carve, but it's going to be a V-Carve Toolpath with a flat bottom. So I kind of think about it as a pocket toolpath and a better pocket toolpath, and I'm going to show you why. There are different applications for the pocket versus the Advanced V-Carve, but I do believe the Advanced V-Carve really shines when you have a logo or a symbol or something that you want to have a flat bottom but it also has multiple different corners, different text with different sizes. And we're gonna see how it applies here in this example. But before going into that, let me just reiterate, it is a V-carve, but it is a V-carve with a flat bottom. And since it does have a flat bottom, we need to treat it kind of like a pocket toolpath where we have to set a max depth. Whereas in the V-carve toolpath, I just said, let's select stock bottom or the thickness of your material and let Carbide Create do the determination of what the max depth is. On the advanced V carve toolpath, we have to set a max depth. Okay, so let's go ahead and just talk about this example. So, with this selected, we're going to go ahead and click on toolpaths. And I want to show you real quick what the pocket toolpath looks like. In this example, I'm pocketing it with a 1 8 inch end mill. And you can see here all these blue lines are the path that the end mill is going to take. It looks pretty good. But when you come in here, you can see that this E, this area right here, is too small for the end mill to enter so it's not even going to carve that we're not going to be able to get these corners here this sharp point here in this area it's not going to be able to carve that out because of the geometry and the size of the end mill let's take a look at a quick simulation looking at these nostrils they're not going to come out as they should like on the on the design so that's something to keep in mind like i mentioned the e is not carved correctly even the a is not carved correctly i didn't notice that at first but you can see here in the simulation the a is not carved correctly also, the end is not carved correctly, right? Because in the design, it comes to a straight point and then goes back up. It's not able to do that with the 1 8 inch end mill. Let's go back to the design real quick. You can see here the point there and here. And I didn't notice this originally, but the it is not even carved out. The text is too small for the 1 8 inch end mill. It's only carving this little area right there. So that is what the output is going to be like. It's not perfect, right? So now let's enable the advanced V carve toolpath. These bigger, wider lines are going to be carved with the 1 8 inch end mill as before, but this darker blue area is going to be carved using the 60 degree V bit. The V bit is able to enter into these areas and carve a tighter path, allowing it to be carved correctly. You can see here on the end, the end mill is going to go up to this point, but the V bit is going to come in here and carve all this out, giving us that sharp output. Let's take a look at the simulation. Comparing the nostrils again, you can see that that carved out correctly this time around. The E looks good, as well as the A. The N is now carved as it should with this point here. And the ITS is actually carved out this time. So you can see how the advanced V-carve actually really shines when you want to have a design with a flat bottom 
and it has some of these sharp corners, sharp text. And you can see how the advanced V-Carve is one of those tool paths that you're going to use a lot. And so that is the advanced V-Carve. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video. If you did, make sure to take a look at the other videos I have that are for beginners. I think those videos will get you started. So I'll see you over there.